iSpot fans, it's Martin. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about making your own substrate for isopods. Uh, yes, you can buy some pre-made stuff, um, but you can make batches on your own. Uh, pretty simple. The, the, main, the main goal here is to keep your substrate loose so that it, it's something that doesn't compact. Um, and, and typically you'll want to change out your substrate at least once or twice a year, depending on how many animals are within the enclosure. Um, and, and that's just to keep everything nice and fresh and, and clean for the animals. Um, so I made an original video that had probably a hundred ingredients in it. I, I'm exaggerating a little bit. It had a lot of stuff in it. Is it necessary to put everything that I put in my first video into your mix? Not necessarily. This is the simplified version. This is going to work for pretty much any isopod. It, it, it's great in a terrarium. Plants will grow perfectly. It's an aerated soil. Um, so yeah, with no further ado, let's get into it. I'll go through each um, ingredient that goes into this mix. And, uh, and yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, so the first ingredient, not necessarily in this order, but orchid mix. Basically, it's just a bunch of, um, uh, it's basically just bark, essentially, that's inside there. Um, and, you know, decaying wood and bark, isopods love that stuff. It helps also to aerate the soil. Uh, the next part that I put in is some sand. I just use this natural aquarium sand, nice and clean. And then I'll mix that in with some premium organic vegetable and herb mix. Uh, organic is very important. There's no added additives or anything in that. It's 100% organic. It's not going to harm the animals. Last but not least, uh, on this front here, uh, I like to add some worm castings. Again, that just enriches the soil. Um, and uh, yeah, it's be very beneficial for the soil, for it, it, it growing it inside there. Next, we have. Uh, some peat moss. I just bought a big bag of peat moss. I think it's like 10 bucks for a, a pretty huge bag. I just sectioned off some of that stuff into a pail. And then I have just an empty container. We're going to be mi mixing all of the um, all of the substrate together. And then finally I have, which is kind of hard to see here, but lump coal, hardwood lump coal. Uh, that keeps the uh, the uh, soil nice and fresh and clean and it has a lot of antibacterial properties uh, so I like to add it to the soil it keeps things nice and fresh for a long period of time all right so let's get to mixing okay so I have all the ingredients here uh, the next step is just to mix them together pretty simple I'm using basically uh, two parts or orchid mix um, two parts premium organic soil two parts um i would say it's not two parts sand but two bags of sand which are quite a bit smaller than the bags of uh of organic soil and um orchid mix then i have peat peat i would say is probably the equivalent amount of the bags uh, uh there's probably two bags of quantity wise in in that five gallon pail then I have a five gallon pail that's nearly, I guess, a third full. Uh, and I'll be mixing that in as well. Uh, there's no real science behind it. I start off with my peat moss as my base. Then I'll add a bag of orchid mix. Then uh, the soil, mix in some worm castings, a whole bag of sand, half of my bucket of um, of lump coal and then I just mix it up. So we'll go from there, let's go. We've got about half of the peak moss in here. Okay, so half the peat is in there. Now I'll open up 
Orchid mix. Here's my trusty scissors. There we are. Okay, as you can see, just a bunch of loose bark. Fantastic for aeration. And, uh, yeah, there's also percolate in there as well. Good. Okay, I'm gonna give that a quick stir. Okay. Oh, it's kind of long. Oh, you probably just do this, and I'll be fine with that. Um, next, we'll do a bag of sand. Sand just increases the the water circulation. Help for roots of any plants that you may have in your terrarium. Or in your whatever enclosure you may have, uh, and uh, yeah, just add that in and stir it up. You probably don't want to have this clarifier or this stuff in there. Came out of the bag, so make sure you don't leave any foreign objects inside. Okay, so we'll give that a stir. That's what it looks like so far, folks. It's looking quite nice. Okay, so next. Next, we will add our organic soil. Soil and percolate mix inside there, and we'll mix that up. Okay, next I have probably third of a bag of worm castings. I'll add half of it now and then half of it for the next batch. Okay. Okay. Next, we'll add some lump coal. coal uh, if you just buy big bags at uh, any outlet uh, any kind of coal I would suggest that you rinse it off first it's, it's very dusty um, I'm not exactly sure if the dust would harm the uh, the isopods or any animal um, but hey you're making some fresh stuff might as well have everything nice and clean and, and uh, ready to go so I'll mix that in. springtails in your um, in your enclosure will We'll also benefit from the coal. Okay. And then there's one ingredient which I haven't um, brought to the table, but I just thought of. It's a sangman moss. So I'm going to go get some sangman moss and add some to the mix. Okay, so we're, we got the sphagnum moss, uh, basically a 12 liter um, package, nice and dry. I've got two packages, one, one for each mix. So all we'll do is we'll open this up and put it inside. All right, so let's break that apart. Sphagnum moss is great for your, for your substrate. It absorbs water. Uh, again, another area of filtration. Ooh, plastic in my sub, in my my moss here, that's not good. So just take it all apart, separate it so it's not too clump, and give that a good little mix.
sphagnum moss will be broken down over time when it's in the earth like this. Um, I, I find that some of my isopods eat the sphagnum moss, uh, but that's not the case necessarily for all species. Um, but it's a good medium to have inside your substrate, again, for aeration and, and water retention. <clears throat> so I put in a lot, I find there's a lot of sphagnum moss right now. I think one pack is enough probably for both, um, both mixes. So now I'll do part two, which is just the remainder of the ingredients. Starting off with peat. Then we'll do the orchid mix. Uh, sorry, this is the organic soil. Okay. Now we'll do the sand. Okay, cut that open. castings <clears throat> give that a little stir and then we're going to add our charcoal and our orchid mix next and that should do it After review, I will add a little bit more sphagnum moss, just a little bit more. I think maybe half the pack should do. If you're planning on starting your collection or you have a collection of isopods, sphagnum moss is probably your best friend. Uh, it's something that you use quite often and replenish in their, uh, in their uh, enclosures. Um, as I said, some do eat it. Uh, it, does, it does diminish over time and you'll, you'll need to replenish it. Um, so yeah, I think I got maybe a half a bag here. All right, so that's plenty. Okay, we got that. Now we'll put our lump coal, the remainder of our lump coal inside. All right, we got that. And last, but certainly not least, we have our orchid mix. All right, orchid mix. Okay, time to mix all this up. And make a mess. I'd suggest you do this maybe in your garage, not necessarily in your kitchen. Okay, so that's mixed up. Looks awesome. Let's get you close up here. All right. And the close up of my mess. Look at that. Ah. Oh. All right. So, I got that in the container. You'll notice that there are holes on the 
on the inside of the hand grips. Um, you know, uh, this, this mix is completely dry and I want to keep it dry until I use it. Then at that point, I'll, I'll moisten it uh, depending on the species. Uh, but yeah, so the airflow is good. It keeps the soil nice and, and dry and, and I've never had or experienced any molding from that. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because of the holes or because it's naturally dry. Um, so yeah, well, it's done now. Pretty simple to do. Uh, a few ingredients, orchid mix, organic potting soil, sand. We have some peat moss. We have some charcoal. And then we have some worm castings. Really simple, super highly nutritious or, or very good soil, I should say, for the isopods. Um, they're going to love running around in, in, in here and digging burrows and, and whatnot and ca causing mischiefs, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, so the next video is that I'll be putting this substrate into the enclosures and, and um, welcoming new isopods into their new habitats. This is Martin. Thank you for watching the video and peace.